surgical approach of retroesophageal goiter. Goiterous extension outside of the thyroid bed occurs rarely behind or along the sides of the pharynx or esophagus, only 7.4%. The mechanism is as follows. As you see in the sketch, through a cutaway in the fascia, the thyroid gland and trachea are seen within the visceral compartment. The fascia around the inferior thyroid artery is also seen as it divides the lower portion of the visceral compartment and anterior pretracheal and posterior retrovisceral spaces. Here and here. The common fascia around the cervical esophagus, the visceral fascia, is also seen as it extends around the pharyngeal constrictor muscles, extending up to the skull base. The gland can extend caudally and anteriorly into the pretracheal space and substernal region. The thyroid gland can also grow posteriorly into the retrovisceral space. Once behind the esophagus, it can then grow caudally into the posterior mediastinum or cranially into the retropharyngeal space, both of which are areas of the common visceral space. Here. Multinodural goiters of retroesophageal position can be successfully removed via the surgical approach we describe here. A CT scan of the patient shows a mass in the posterior mediastinum in a retrotracheal retroesophageal location. Contrast enhanced CT scan with coronal reconstructed image. The left lobe of the thyroid gland shows an inhomogeneous mass with focal areas of hemorrhage. I start from the opposite lobe, the right one. I dissect and ligate the left upper pole's vessels. The axis to the left posterior visceral space is splayed from above to below with blunt digital dissection.
left inferior thyroid artery ligation. The incision is extending for 1.5 cm left. The strap muscles left are resected as high as possible. Notice that all this area was behind the esophagus. I mark the right lobe with a suture. And I remove the specimen. This video is for educational purposes only. Thank you for watching.